Hey everyone, welcome to the YoshiCast. I'm Yoshi, and today is episode three of Bag and Board. We're gonna go over some viewer questions as well as go over the books I've picked up since last week's haul. Today is Tuesday, June 5th, 2018. Welcome back, everybody. Let's kick off this episode with some viewer questions. This first question comes via YouTube from user Team Power Awesome Team. That is an awesome name. Uh, Team Power Awesome Team asks, Serious question, please answer. Why are you so sexy? Maybe it's Maybelline. That was a legit question I got. I answered it. You guys can leave questions, too. So next, I got a bunch of questions from YouTube user Dinobot Maximize. And Dinobot's first question is, I noticed you use gloves. What kind of gloves are these and do you recommend using them over any other kind? I started using dip disposable uh, nitrile gloves. I think those are latex gloves. Uh, I did use regular latex surgical gloves, but they tend to make my hands dry, especially when I'm doing comic reviews under a lamp. Well, Dinobot, I'm using uh, cotton gloves. I'm using disposable cotton gloves. I bought these off of Amazon, and I'll throw a link down below. Why do I, why do I use cotton gloves over latex gloves this is a great question. Probably the biggest reason, though, is because of the care of the comic book. Now, I found in using latex gloves, I can handle the pages easier. I can open the books easier. However, if you ever come across something on or in your book that is a foreign substance, especially something sticky or something wet, uh, or if you know, you're just talking to your friend while you're working on comic books and a little bit of spittle comes out, like latex gloves are not good for that. You have to grab a, a paper towel or something and, or, or what have you and, and, and clean it up. Whereas if you're using cotton gloves and you come across a foreign substance on your book, you know, they're cotton. It's gonna absorb some of that. It's gonna help remove it, even if you don't see it. That That's a big reason why I've chosen to use cotton gloves. Um, yes, it is harder to flip through the pages in your comics with uh, cotton gloves, but you've seen in my other videos where I'm, I feel like I've gotten very proficient of putting the micro chamber paper in and flipping through pages and checking the books. Uh, that just comes from experience and use and, and practice. You know, there's, it comes down to personal preference. I've just, over the years, for the reasons I've stated, prefer the cotton gloves. I have nothing against people who use latex gloves. You gotta use what's what's best for you. And honestly, uh, realistically speaking, uh, both of these gloves are cheap. Uh, you can get them online. I suggest you get them, try them, figure out which ones you like the best, and stick with them, which is what I did. Uh, second question. In using the artist tape, I use regular Scotch transparent tape and I do similar to you in placing the tape at an angle and making it easier to open. But I use two pieces, each about a quarter of the way from the side of the ends. Also, I am not using the same type of bags you use. They are ones I got from my local card shop uh, where I get a great deal on them. So tape, you know, again, this is, this is personal preference, guys. Like, there's unfortunately no study I'm aware of that you can point to and show that, you know, using two, three, four, five, eight pieces of tape is better than using one piece of tape. Um, this is just the way I choose to do it. Um, it, you know, when I do want to read a comic, it's a lot easier to pull off one piece of tape than it is two. That, I guess, it, that aspect of the way I archive my books is probably considered the lazy aspect. I use a single piece of tape. The bags and boards you're getting, they're, they're probably the same kind I'm getting at my local comic book shop. They're dirt cheap. They get the job done. Um, but after seven to ten years, you need to consider replacing them. That's, that's the downside to them. You spend less, you have to replace them. Uh, you spend a little bit more, takes about a hundred, you know, with, with my MyLite 2s, the, it's a it's hundred years before you have to replace them. So it's, it's just what you can afford, what you're comfortable with doing. You know, some people, you know, buying the, the cheap bags and boards is great because it, it forces them the, every several years to go through their comic collection, re-bag and board things, double check on the value of stuff. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. I just, you know, this is the way I go because this is the way I enjoy doing it. This is how I partake in the hobby. You shouldn't feel bad about doing uh, cheap bags and boards. You should feel bad about it if you're not replacing them every 10 years or so. So uh, you do what you do and you move on. Next question. I do something I don't see many others do with comics. I'm curious of what your thoughts on it. 
I take a regular index card and write on it the name of the issue, the issue number, the release date, the printing number, and so on and so forth. And then I place this index card between the bag and the back board so it's visible from the back. That way I can look at the back and not have to pull out the issue to check on the details or the information I'm looking for. I will also put if it's been signed and who signed it and such. What are your thoughts? Great question. Um, these are all great questions, uh, but uh, what do I do? Uh, mostly, mostly what I do is all, all of that information you're putting on your index card in the book, which I think is super cool, uh, I put in an Excel sheet. Um, if I had to write all that information down for every comic book uh, I had, yeah, I, I'd never get through my collection. Uh, so I put it in Excel sheets. That way, um, it, it does a bunch of things for me. If there's a convention coming up, I can cross-search the uh, the uh, the artists at the convention with the comics I have to see if there's anybody I'm interested in signing a book or getting a sketch cover from. Um, now, if I'm if I'm putting a book up for sale or I'm giving it away or I'm taking it to a comic book shop, I'll write information on a sticky, uh, a custom little you know square sticky, and put it on the front of the book that indicates you know if the book is signed or if it's a second, third, fourth, fifth printing, what have you or uh, if there's any damage to the book. That way, uh, and, and everybody appreciates that. They like to know what they're getting, and, and you're being upfront with them that way. That's, that's how I do it. 90% of everything I do uh, regarding the book, if it's signed or that kind of information I need, I throw in an Excel sheet. And I'm saying Excel, I mean Google Spreadsheets, which is the same damn thing. Uh, I throw it in Google Spreadsheets, and that's how I organize everything. That was a great question. Thank you, Dinobot. Uh, what else you got here? I use BCW short boxes to store my comics in. They are listed to hold 150 to 175 issues. Do you store your books to the limit of the box, or do you leave some room for the books to breathe to make it easier for them, and make it easier for you to pull them out? Uh, good question. And I. It's weird. I've seen this one come up online a lot recently. So I use uh, short boxes too. Um, the current age of short boxes, the current um, uh, short boxes, at least the ones I've been buying from my local comic book shop, seem to be longer than the short boxes I used to get in the late 80s, early 90s. They also aren't as durable. I'm digressing from your question, Dinobot, but uh, what I do is... Uh, I put uh, my comics in there. I give them room to breathe. I, I make sure there's enough room for me to flip through them and swap out books and add books a little bit if I need to. And then I put those boxes in a very large four drawer uh, filing cabinet. So uh, in each drawer of this filing, this metal filing cabinet I have, I can store four boxes, four short boxes of comics. So four uh, in each drawer. And that's, that's what I do. Yeah, I give them room to breathe, especially, especially with signed comic books and sketched comic books. I think this is uber important that you make sure there's some breathing room in there. Uh, next question. The boards I use are similar to what you describe. I tend to use the side uh, of mine that I feel would give more cushion to the comic. What do you recommend? Uh, this is a good question. Um, I'm trying to remember about the boards I used before uh, I got my lights. Um, I tend to think... When you buy a thing of boards like the MyLite boards I use, uh, they they have a bit of a bend to them, a bit of a bow. They bow out on one side, and you know, set them on a clean table, and you'll find out which side is bending. So the side that that bows up, that has the bow, I'll put the comic on that side. And I've read about this on message boards and stuff, and this is what everybody seems to do. Now the bow is not this exaggerated. When you set it on the table, at least with my boards, you can see just a little bit underneath it. Underneath it, you know which side is bowing up, and uh, that's the side I put my comic on. Um, I know what I, re I what I do remember about the cheap bags and boards I used to get is that the cheap boards would have a super uh, smooth side and a slightly rougher side, and I always put my books on the smoother side. And I have no logic to that other than that's just what I did. I didn't I didn't read that anywhere. That's just how I did it. I don't do that now. I use different stuff now. But that's how I used to do it. Uh, next question. Do you tend to think having a little bit of, I guess, space for the comic in the bag and board is recommended? What I mean is when you have it in the bag and board, there's just a little bit of the area around the book where you can see the board. Or do you recommend having the book tucked all the way to the bottom of the bag and board? Well, uh, that is a great question. Um, 
Because I remember when I started out, I wanted tight bags and boards. There's just something about that crispness about it. But uh, I've come to learn the hard way that is not the way to do it. And I'll show you some examples when I uh, bag and board my haul this week. Um, but I like to be able to see the board around the entire comic. Um, and, and mostly, I mean, this just protects the board and it protects the comic and keeps the comic flat flatter, especially on the four corners of the comic book. There's always a scenario where you're you're going to drop a comic at some point, and uh, I want to have that extra space on the board to absorb some of that impact. I'm not saying it's going to keep from damaging your book, but it's going to spare some damage from your book should you drop it while it's bagged and boarded. Um, so that's what I, I would recommend. Make sure you can see the board on all sides. Uh, before you stuff it in your comic box or, or what have, put it on display or what have you. Uh, lastly, Dinobot writes, lastly, lastly, I want to say I think your system of care is awesome. Having a filing cabinet to access them better seems like such a great idea. I wish I'd considered that. With the shape my back is in and the fact that I'm getting older, is there anything you might recommend for this? Uh, keep up the great work. Uh, well, thank you so much, Dinobot. I really appreciate that. You, you wrote a lot of great questions, and I really appreciate you taking the time to do that. Um, so, you know, I love having my books in a filing cabinet. And uh, for you, you know, the first two, maybe even three drawers would, would be nice on your back. Um, the bottom drawer, though, you know, that's where I'm starting with my reorganization here. And uh, it's killing me. <laughs> it's killing me. Uh, my My... What I've started doing basically and what I should have done from the beginning is I take a box out of my filing cabinet Be it any of the drawers and I put it on a large flat table I've got I've got a really nice kitchen with a, a large island on it that I set my books on I can sit down comfortably and I can work and bag and board these guys without Too much of anything affecting my back. I'm not leaning over a whole lot. I'm not on the floor I'm not digging in the in the in the filing cabinet. Remember the filing cabinet is for storage you know, you're supposed to have done the organization before you put it in the filing cabinet. So I would suggest wherever your books are, move them to a, a work area where you can work comfortably on them. Maybe limit the time you work on them. Maybe set an alarm on your phone for every 15 minutes to just get up and stretch out. As far as the filing cabinet goes, I love having it. I love storing my books on that in there. Uh, it's been great. And I found mine on Craigslist. Uh, and I found it cheap on Craigslist. I just had to go pick it up and haul it. It was heavy. It is metal. Uh, but uh, uh, it was cheap, and it's worked out great, and it's one of the best decisions for comic collecting I've ever done. I can't recommend it enough. And uh, thank you again, Dinobot and Team Power Awesome Team, for your questions. They were great. Now, let's move on to this week's haul, shall we? So last Wednesday, I was able to get out on new comic book day and go to my comic store, The Comics Place, and uh, one thing I like to do is look at the new rack, what came out that week. And one thing that caught my eye on the shelf was that Amazing Spider-Man 800 came out. Now, I forgot this book came out last week. I, 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 I knew it was coming, it just fell off my radar, I didn't realize it was coming out. This is an interesting book like Action Comics 1000 that came out last month. Uh, Marvel did uh, some very similar things. One thing uh, with this is they had tons of covers. They had tons of covers. And because I didn't get to my comic book store first thing Wednesday morning, I have no idea of all the covers they received. Now, most of the covers for uh, Amazing Spider-Man 800 didn't interest me. Walking by, I saw this cover and just the art on it blew me away. It was a cover, it was, it's not one of the rare covers by any means, but it was one of the nicest covers I saw in the comic book store of all the issues of all the comics that came out last Wednesday, and I had to have this. So one thing is Marvel is charging 10 bucks for this comic book. Uh, I don't feel this is a $10 comic book, uh, not at all. Um, I don't, uh, Action Comics 1000 wasn't a $10 comic book. And Action Comics, which was a similar size and a similar thickness and a similar page count, had a square bound spine on the back of it. This is stapled. Um, I'm not sure if a book this thick, and this is a thick meaty book, uh, should be stapled. Um, and, and one of the reasons for that is my, my comic book store uh, had a bunch of copies of Spider-Man 800 in the various covers. And a lot of them had corner damage on them. Now, I don't know how many books they got from the get-go. I don't know how many were cherry-picked before I got there. When I got there, they had two of these books. Uh, and 
the one they had in front of this, the corners were just trashed. And by trashed, I mean they were dinged. They, it happened in shipping. Um, you see that a lot. Uh, I wasn't going to spend, uh, I wasn't going to buy that, and I wasn't going to spend $10 on that. However, the one behind it, to me, is immaculate, and so I picked it up. It's, and I picked it up for the cover art. The cover art is just beautiful to me. And uh, I hope you get a chance to see this in person because it's, it's, it's great. Um, now, a thicker book like this is going to fit in the My Lights bags and boards, as you will see. And Dinobot, if you're watching, you can see how I'm making sure the border is visible uh, around the comic. And there we have it. Amazing Spider-Man 800. You just see how that pops in the Mylar. And you can see that I've got the board sticking out on all the sides of the comic. And it just looks great. This is a great cover. I absolutely love this cover. I'm not one who normally picks up Spider-Man, but this cover jumped out at me. Now, next up is a book I had to order online. Uh, my local comic book store doesn't generally get blank covers. I almost always have to order these on the internet. And... Uh, Got one I'm pretty stoked about, the incredible, I'm sorry, the invincible Iron Man. This is issue 600 of the invincible Iron Man with the retro Iron Man logo. I love this. I freaking love this. The retro logo, the cleanliness of this uh, blank cover. Uh, Marvel started doing something new with their blank covers and I don't really like it. Uh, what are your thoughts? They've started putting the Marvel logo and the issue number above the logo of the comic book title. Generally, they would put it on the side where I thought it fit better and it didn't eat up this valuable space. They could have nudged the, the logo up a little bit more, given the artist a little more room. But the retro logo, I had to get this one. I order my blank covers online and I generally order, as a rule, four at a time. Um, I'm not in the comic book store, uh, and my com I'm sorry, my comic book store doesn't carry blank covers, and I'm not in the comic book store to actually cherry pick the covers I want. And what I have found uh, in my experience of ordering blanks online is that um, generally two will be damaged, uh, and and they're not really damaged; they're just not something I would buy. Um, there will be a uh, a printing scuff or a dinged corner um, on a book and uh, it's just not one I would want to give to an artist to draw on. Um, so I generally order four online, usually two of them are uh, have something wrong with them that I'm not comfortable with and usually two of them are okay. This is a, this is a front and back blank and I do like this. I do love, I know that they have to have a, a, a barcode on these covers, but I'm glad that they've got it vertical and on the bottom corner and out of the way. Uh, depending on the art you have done on these, uh, you know, should you use the front and back? Uh, depending on how the art is, the artist can just cover this up with black uh, marker, black Sharpie or something. You wouldn't even know it's there. Just depends on, on how they do it. Now, I am putting this in a normal MyLights 2 bag with a full back board. Should I get an artist to draw the front and the back of this one, what I would do is have put, after the work is done, transfer the comic to a MyLights 4 bag, a thicker bag that's way sturdier than a MyLights 2. And since most of my books are either displayed uh, carefully or stored in my uh, my uh, comic book box filing cabinet system. I'm not worried about them getting damaged or bent or anything. But uh, I guess if I were moving them around more or shipping them for sure, I would I would bag and board the heck out of them. But uh, but if they're drawn on both sides, I want to be able to take the book out and look at both sides without removing it from the mylar. So I'll switch to the mylar the mylights four on those. So yeah, I did get uh, four copies of this blank uh, Iron Man comic. I'm not going to bag all four of them in front of you, but it was a short, a sh it was a it was a small haul this week. I got the Amazing Spider-Man and I got the Iron Man book, and that was it. And there you have it, the Invincible Iron Man, all bagged and boarded. 
Thank you guys for joining me for this week's Bag and Board. I really appreciate it. Remember, tomorrow is Wednesday. It's new comic book day. Get out to your local comic book store, see what they got, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.